Hi everyone, it's Vacha here from RecordingStudio9.com and thanks for joining me again. In this video, which is part of the series of recording a song using the Personas Studio One version 3 Prime DAW, we're going to go ahead and record another track as part of our song. Today's track is going to be the guitar sound that we're going to record as the MIDI file is being played and my Korg PA3X is producing the sound of the guitar. Now while we actually are recording uh, the track, I will also demonstrate and show you how we can work around the, uh, the, uh, the Studio One DAW, which has limitations, and uh, to be able to control the incoming sound to minimize uh, the amount of work that we need to do later on. As always, it's a good idea to fix the problem uh, at first hand before trying to fix it in the mix which is part of the things uh, probably much every recording engineer and mixing engineer will tell you that um, you've got to make sure that you have a quite reasonable sound and manipulation that you need to do right at the beginning, right at the source to get a good source so that you don't have to really work hard later on. So I will show you a few tips and ideas and we're also going to use again uh, on the input um, insert of the track uh, while we're recording the guitar sound to use the channel strip to manipulate it and fit the sound of the guitar nicely within its audio spectrum so that it doesn't interfere with the rest of the sounds that we're going to have uh, on our recorded songs. So without any further ado, let's get onto the screen and start recording our next track. Well, what I have done, since uh, we have recorded our bass track in my previous video, I have gone ahead and named all of the tracks, the MIDI tracks, of what instrument they are, so that it makes it easier now to uh, recognize and turn each instrument on and off. Now, uh, since we have already recorded the bass track, what I will show you is, uh, now that we don't need it, I will show you how we can actually hide this track and as we no longer require it because we already have the audio track of it. We can go ahead and click right here, track list, and then come here and click on that dot and now the track has disappeared. Now we can do the same thing with the stereo mix as well, so that disappeared. The track is not deleted, it just hidden from view. It gives us more room for us to play around here um, on the screen. Now I have already gone ahead and added a new track and call it the nylon... Oop, I might have to collect that. Nylog guitar. Sorry about that. There we go. Nylon guitar. And I have enabled and soloed the nylon guitar MIDI track that's going to be played back. And let's open our mixer. And here we go. Now I've also nicely colored our bass track, um, you know, nice and purple. Um, and our nylon guitar, you know, orangey guitar -y color, classic guitar color. So I can identify it in color as well. And we can view all stereo input, input one, left, input two, right, uh, and so on there as well. So it's going to be coming at input 1. That's where the keyboard is connected. It's the sound going to be come through. And uh, I have added a channel strip there as well. And uh, let's have a quick listen uh, to what the um, guitar sound sounds like coming from the um, Korg PA3X. Here we go. It's always a good idea to um, do a preview before you start recording, making sure the levels are correct. You know, we're getting about, you know, uh, minus 5, minus 4 dB. It might be a little bit too loud, so we might turn the volume down. Because you, I usually like about minus 10 dB, minus 9 dB as an average uh, input. That way it gives us enough headroom to play around with and, and do things with it. Bit 
more. And every time to reset that, I can click here and that will reset. See, that's quite loud uh, a peak that's coming in. But that I think the compressor will, uh, in the channel strip, will take care of that. To be able to control the peak hold, you can right click um, right there, view hold. You can enable it so that it holds it or it doesn't hold it. And also how long you want that hold to be. I usually like at 15 seconds so um, doesn't disappear too quickly and it's not too long as well. So that's how you can find out the uh, the peak values. It's quite important. Mm, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So let's uh, open up the uh, channel strip and see what we can do. Now probably the first thing I would like to do is the low cut so we can get rid of some of the low end because you don't want the classic guitar uh, taking over the uh, bass guitar sounds. So let's turn it on. Now that's too thin. Somewhere about, you know, probably about 90 hertz is a good thing to do. That's all good. Uh, what we, the next thing we can do, I'll show you a tip, uh, uh, how we can find out those uh, sort of nasty frequencies that um, can cause, you know, not a nice sound to the ear, so it's not pleasant to the ear. The way to find out, grab the middle one and, and then sweep across. So you sweep at the maximum volume and see where it really, really hurts your ear. Right there. And then what we do is we bring it down. So we can read off that um, sort of nasty sound from it. Uh, as we have reduced it, so we'll just give that boost a little bit more. So that should sound much better as well. So it got rid of that nasty sound um, from the track. So let's add some compression. Again, not too much, making sure that our levels doesn't go more than minus uh, 6 dB um, at peak times. And because it's a guitar, it's got fast transient, so let's put the um, transient setting really fast, so it captures it and releases it quickly as well. So you don't really feel the guitar sound losing volume. I think uh, we're quite happy with that. Okay, now that we have uh, our sort of problem frequency solved, um, here's a new tip. There's nothing stopping you adding a new channel strip after the first one. So that's the, um, the first one, and that's the second one. So now, we probably won't need any of the low cuts because that's being done on, with the first one. Uh, we can do with the, uh, we probably don't need compression. Now we can use this middle band to adjust and find out our sort of um, nice frequency and enhance it maybe. So let's give that a try. See how that will actually sound. So uh, you can always stack, you know, two or three or, or more uh, channel strips to get more bandwidth. It's about there. So that's a nice crisp end. Again, we can just see by using the 
adaptive EQ, we can have it. I usually like to boost um, um, sort of wide and cut narrow. So that's what you can do. So that's let's pin that up there as the second one. And I will click on the first one so we can see on top of each other, both of them. Let's pin that one. So that's a narrow cut. You can see it's much narrower. It's wider now cut. And when we remove adaptive Q, um, it's much narrower cut. And then over here we got a wider um, sort of boost. So you always cut narrow and boost wide. So now we're getting a little bit more crispiness. So uh, let's find out uh, how much difference both of channel strips are making now. Now this is much much smoother than um, than previously by itself. So when we turn it off, again it's a bit boomy, but when we have it on, it's got nice crisp and mellow sound coming in. You still have that lower end, that warmth in the guitar sound, even though it's not a real guitar. It is um, you know coming from a keyboard, but now we are able to adjust it. Um, is just right. So let's go ahead and commit this and write record the track. Okay, here we go. Okay, all the track is been recorded so we can uh, close this one now and let's have a quick look uh, looks uh, pretty cool looks pretty cool so we can turn uh, that off uh, we can mute that and let's have a, a quick listen with both uh, the bass and nylon guitar Okay, you might find that it's actually out of timing. That's because of the delays and uh, latency between each track that it uh, has been recorded. It's all over the place. So let's see if we can uh, quickly fix it. So you can just sort of adjust it. Okay, let's give it a try. Yeah, looks like our guitar player was not in time. <laughs> so now we have it um, in pretty much time. Well, we've got our guitar track in there as well. And now we can actually hear a bass guitar and the uh, classical nylon guitar sounds both together. Um, I hope uh, you know I covered enough information in there and now you can actually see how you can use the three band EQ in the channel strip, uh, how to you can manipulate the sound and get rid of some of you know the nasty tones within the the musical instrument, whether if it's a guitar or a piano or uh, or any any other musical instrument. They always have that fundamental uh, frequencies and all the harmonics and sometimes there might be some tones which are not really uh, you know nice to the ear so now you know how you can remove them and also uh, you now you know that you don't need to have just one um, channel strip you can have multiple channel strips stacked so that you can manipulate multiple frequencies so there you go even though you only have you know three um, band to play around per uh, uh, channel strip but you can expand that to as many as you need as long as you know your PC can handle it usually uh, all pretty much new PCs can handle it so you can manipulate and look after it 
adjusted so that anything that you record um, it sounds nice enough so you have to do minimal work uh, when we're mixing the rest of the track so if you like this uh, video give me the thumbs up so i know it was helpful for you and as always please do subscribe to my youtube channel so you can follow up with the rest of the videos that i'll do on this series and also lots of other videos and tips and ideas that i come up with and um, also you can visit my website recordingstudio9.com you can register on my website as a user that way you have access to the uh, the code and the tabs of this uh, song as well as uh, the download of the new one as well in every video that i do there'll be a new download available of the project with all the sound recorded including the midi files and so on so it's a you know good chance for you to practice um, not as you watch you can practice yourself as well um, with, with the project and uh, you can also visit my uh, I guess a Facebook uh, channel as well just search for recording studio 9 if you cannot find it just let me know and until next time thanks for watching I hope you have a great time making music cheerio bye bye